Welcome everyone to the Python pattern printing video. Python is one among the world's most widely used programming language in the present day with innumerable applications that range from basic coding right up to the most advanced AI programming. And patterns in programming is something that all learners should be good with since it literally enhances a programmer's ability to visualize from the data that they are dealing with. So without further wait, let's start the session. But before we begin the session, Make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us. Hello everyone and welcome to today's hands-on session on Python pattern printing by IntelliPath. In this session, we'll be covering topics about what patterns are in programming, their importance in general, and then the hands-on part where I'll be explaining in detail about a few of the most frequently sought out pattern printing problems in Python and you may code along with me. But before we move on to the video, please make sure Sure you're subscribing to our YouTube channel and enabling that bell icon so that you'll receive all our updates regularly. So without any more wait, let's get to today's agenda. Firstly, we'll look into what are patterns in programming and then why are patterns important and then the best ways to master patterns and then some of the most frequently asked problems and then finally hands-on session to explain the solutions to those problems. So now let's get to our first topic which is what are patterns in programming? Patterns in programs are designs or symbols made out of numbers, alphabets or symbols in a certain order. Looping structures in programming languages are used to solve these patterns. Patterns in programming can be applied for a variety of purposes. Which brings us to our next topic which is why are patterns important? Pattern problems in programming assists newcomers in visualizing how each loop iteration works. And more importantly, patterns are the way in which employees can foresee or predict various business-related outcomes based on the input data that they get to work with. For example, if I display a list of numbers such as 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh, and asked you to predict the next number in line, you all would have probably guessed and said the number 10 lakh. Now, let's analyze how that is possible. So basically, what we did consciously or subconsciously was to recognize a pattern and then predict an outcome based on that. In this particular case, you might have recognized that the number of zeros in each of the numbers increased by one every time a new number was displayed. Now let's see another set of numbers. 12, 2, 232, 50 and 9182 and asked you to predict the next number like before, you would find it nearly impossible to do so. Hence, patterns always help in future predictions. Similarly, patterns related to business graphs and data would also help the employees of an organization predict business plans and models to maximize profit. Hence, the basic pattern printing problems in programming language is proven to be one of the most essential ones among the other basics of programming. Also, questions related to pattern printing are frequently asked during campus placements and career interviews as well. Now, let's see how to easily learn various pattern printing problems in programming. So that brings us to our next topic which is best ways to master patterns. This comes down to a rather simple looking method which consists of two sub methods which are the code backtracking this is nothing but getting the whole code on a platform, on a computer or on a paper physically and focusing on the various loops and iterations that are coded in the program. Analyzing them so that we can make a sense of them and understand how looping helps avoiding repetition of code or code blocks and directly help us get to the desired pattern as output. And then comes the next subtopic, the iterative output drawing. This is the second step where we plot or draw the current output of all the iterative statements in the code, line by line, snippet by snippet, so that we will get a clear cut clarity on how each line of code prints out the respective output symbols or numbers or alphanumerics, which becomes a part of our desired output that we will get at the end. Now, by switching to our next topic, let's take a look at some of the most frequently asked patterns pattern problems in Python programming. The simple number triangle problem. Then comes the simple hash triangle problem. Then comes the inverted hash triangle problem. Then comes the unique pyramid pattern of digits. And finally, the inverted number pyramid problem. Now, let's move on to the hands-on pattern problem solution to the problems that were displayed earlier. 
Hello guys, so welcome to the hands-on section of today's Python's pattern printing video. So without any wait, let's start. So starting guys, as you all can see, I'm using the Visual Studio Code or the VS Code platform for writing the Python code and then running it. You guys can make use of several other IDEs that are available like PyCharm and etc. Or even use online IDEs as a matter of fact. So let's get to the code. Initially, we are going to initialize a rows variable that is equal to the type of int and then we are going to take input from the user by typing enter the number of rows and then we are going to initialize a for loop of consisting of an integer type variable of i through a range of rows plus one colon and then another for loop of j in range of i then finally we are going to print the value of i comma then put in next line and then we are going to print an empty space so this is the code for the simple number triangle problem and then let's just run and see how it goes Control f5 which is the function for running through vs okay so let's see as you all can see there is a prompt that says enter the number of the rows and i'm going to enter the number five and let's see what happens there you go as you all can see, the simple number triangle is nothing but a simple triangle that consists of numbers in an incremental fashion or order. That means in the first row there is one number, the second row there is two number, third row three, fourth row four, fifth row five and so on. How did we get this? Let's analyze the code. So initially we are putting the rows variable which is of the type integer and then we are taking the value from the user to enter the number of rows and then you are we are using that rows variable inside the parenthesis for the range of an other initialized variable called i in the first for loop and what it does is that basically for i in range of rows so imagine we are taking the rows value as 5 if this plus 1 had not been there then the value of i would range from 0 to 4 which consists of 5 digits 0 1 2 3 and 4 now let's see how the next line of for loop pans out for j is in range of i so we had seen here that because we had mentioned a plus 1 of after the rows the i will range instead of 0 to 4 i will range from 1 to 5 so the first value of i is 1 among that range which will be taken here so for j is in range of 1 so i gets printed here which is 1 and then we are putting a space here and then we are printing to the next line similarly the value of i gets incremented to 2 and then the j is in the range of 0 to 2 so it gets printed two times and the value of i is 2 here and the 2 gets printed twice in the second line and, and then again it goes to the next line where the value of i gets incremented to 3 and because it is in a range of 0 to 2 that consists of 3 digits it the value of i which is 3 right now gets printed thrice and similarly the 4444 4, 4, 4, and then the 55555 5, 5, 5, 5 also gets printed so i hope that was clear to you guys okay so now let's move on to our next problem which, which is a single hash pattern problem so let's type in the code for i in range of or for j in range of i plus one we'll get to why the plus one was added print of now we are printing the value of hash space n is equal to then print the next line now let's try executing this yes so as you can see We've managed to print a simple hash triangle which consists of one hash in the first, two hash in the second, three in third, four in fourth and so on. So in this line of code, basically it says that we are initializing a variable i through a range of four, which means from zero to three. And then we are entering the loop and then the next loop starts here, which is for j is another variable of type integer, which ranges from the value of i plus one. So here we had taken i, here we are taking i plus one, which basically means that every time i is being mentioned through this range, we are adding another one to those numbers so when i is in the range of zero to four zero to three first the value of i will be zero here we are incrementing it by one so we are printing the value hash initially which is just one 
and then we are moving here again where the i value is incremented to 1 and then the j value is incremented to 2. So two number hashes are printed just like that the third row consists of three hash just like that the fourth row consists of four hash. So that's it for this problem. I hope you all understood. Now we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so now let's go to our next problem, which is the inverted hash pattern problem. So let's type in the code without any wait for i in range of... This is very similar to our previous problem, by the way, for j in range of... As you can see, if you are observing the code, you can easily spot that it's very similar to our previous problem, but it is different though. Print of hash, sorry, and is equal to... yeah. And then finally, we are printing the next line. Let's try executing this. Yes, I had not mentioned a space here. Now I'll try executing it again. So as you can see, we had got the direct inverted triangle consisting of the hash this time. So how did we get that? Initially, we are initializing the i variable in the for loop ranging from 0 to 3, which is consisting of four numbers. And then we are entering into the next loop, which is of 4, initializing the variable j in range of 4 minus 1. Earlier, as you can see, it was i plus 1. So whatever value we had here, we were incrementing it by 1. But this time, whatever value we are having in the variable i, we are subtracting that value from the number 4. Why the number 4? Because the total number of hashes that we are mentioned here or the range was 4. So if you are imagining that the i value was 1 or we can take the first row itself, if the i value was 0, then 4 minus 0 would give 4 itself. So the hash would be printed 4 times in the first line and once it gets incremented to i into 1, then 4 minus 1 gives 3. So hash gets printed thrice and then twice and then once. So like that. I hope you all are clear with this this one too so let's get to the next problem okay guys so let's go to the second last problem with, which is the unique pyramid consisting of number problem so let's type in the code force is equal to six i in range one comma rows plus one so here we are taking in two variables inside the parenthesis for the range function we'll explain why that is done in the explanation part range of one comma i minus one Again comes two variables inside the parenthesis. Then we are printing the value of j and we are again opening the loop for j in range of i wait i minus one zero comma minus one. Here we are taking three variables inside the parenthesis. We'll see why that is so. Print of j comma end function finally print. Now let's try executing this program. And as you can see, one, one, two, one. 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 1. So basically this also is like a palindrome function. So it's like a triangle that consists of palindromes. So let's see how the code works. Initially we are initializing a variable rows into the value 6. And we are typing our first for loop uh, consisting of the i variable which is the integer type that goes through a range of 1 comma rows plus 1. This means that the range starts from the value 1 and it goes till the value of rows plus 1. Rows the value of rows is 6 plus 1 is 7. So it goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So if we had not mentioned that and if we just mentioned in the range of rows, it would have been 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is also 7 numbers. So now you can see why 7? There are 7 digits here in the last row of our triangle. Now we go into the next loop line which is the for j loop and then j is in another variable of the type integer. It is ranging from 1 to the value of i minus 1. Now i minus 1 would mean that here i would come as 1. So i minus 1 would be 1 minus 1 to 0. And then we are printing j, so nothing comes. And then we are entering again into the loop where i minus 1 is the first thing, which is 1 minus 1, which is 0. Then it goes till 0 in the step of minus 1. That means it is coming from the opposite end. It is a reversing function. And then we are printing the value of j, and then we have the end, and then we are going to the next line. So that's how we are getting the value 1, 1 to 1, 1 to 3 to 1, and so on. But as you can see, in the first line, it prints till here only, and then this part does not work. 
and in the second line it gets incremented and then prints till 1 2 and then this part prints the 1 part and in the third line it prints till 1 2 and then 2 gets incremented to 3 and then it just prints from this part till to the right and that pattern is being followed throughout and then finally the triangle gets stopped once the maximum number of numbers reaches 7 which we had mentioned here it's 6 but since it's starting from 0 0 to 6 has 7 numbers now let's look at our last program. Now let's see the final program which is the inverted pyramid program. So let's type in the code rows is equal to 5, b is equal to 0, i in range of rows comma 0 comma minus 1. So as we saw earlier there are three parentheses values which shows that there is like a stepwise increment which is minus 1 so it is in a negative way it starts from rows and ends at 0. So b plus 1 is equal to 1 or we can replace that by b is equal to b plus 1 just to make it more simple for j in range of 1 comma i plus 1 trend of b comma n gives and then finally trend of R. Now let's try seeing running this program and see what happens. So as you can see we have got an inverted triangle which consists of numbers but in a decremental way. Now let's see how this code works. So initially we are initiating or initializing the variable which is of the type int as rows as a number 5 and then we are putting the value 0 for the variable b. Then we are opening the for loop consisting of the variable i through a range of rows which is 5 and then 0. So it goes from 5 to 0 in a negative way which means that in a decreasing way. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then b gets incremented by 1. Then for j in range of i and i plus 1. That means it starts from 1 and then it goes till one value higher than the value of i. And then finally we are printing the value of b and then the next line and the print of forward slash r. So finally we can see that initially we can see that there is five numbers of one. So the value of rows is five and then next line gets four values of two which means that so initially we can see that the value of b is zero but then we are incrementing it here to one and we are printing that here. But since there are five number of rows rows it gets printed five times then the row gets decremented by one and the rows value becomes four whereas the b's value again gets incremented here into two so, so two gets printed four times and similarly three gets printed thrice four gets printed twice and finally the value of rows become one and the value of b becomes five after all the iterations and then it's printed i hope you all are clear about the basic python pattern printing problems that we covered in our hands-on session so that's all for this video thank you for watching guys please subscribe to our youtube channel and enable that bell icon for regular updates by intellipath if you want to make a career in data science then intellipath has iit madras advanced data science and ai certification program this course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by iit professors and industry experts